In this video, we're going to discuss some examples of this antibody-mediated diseases, or this type 2 hypersensitivity diseases, or these autoimmune type situations. The first one is autoimmune hemolytic anemia and autoimmune thrombocytopenic pura pura. And we've kind of talked about that in the last video, but the target antigen is the erythrocyte membrane proteins, the Rh blood group antigens, type 1 antigen, and then the platelet mem membrane. And it undergoes the mechanism of actions, that first type that we talked about, the opsonation and phagocytosis of erythrocytes and opsonation and phagocytes of the platelets. Clinical pathological manifestations are hemolysis, anemia, and bleeding. So that undergoes this reaction here, where these uh, IgG are atta attached to this membrane uh, protein, which then this complement activation hooks onto these antibodies and then, ac then activates this complement pathway, and then it undergoes phagocytosis by neutrophils and macrophages. So let's go to the second one, is pemphigus vulgaris, and this is pemphigus vulgaris right here, and you get these blisters, you get these blisters all over the body of the trunk, and at first it happens in the mouth, and then it can kind of spread all over, but it's a very painful condition, and the, and the proteins in the intracellular junctions of the epidermis cells, the epidermal cohedron. So in this case, you have, you have skin cells here that kind of line the tissue. Well, it's these intracellular between these cells, these little junctions are kind of like little welds, if you will, to kind of prevent water from going in. Well, these kind of get all busted up, broken, and the these these uh, cells, these antibodies, these antibodies get attached to these junctions here, and then they uh, are damaged, and that causes this uh, compromise in the skin. And so the mechanism of diseases is the antibody-mediated activation of the proteases, disruption of the intracellular adhesion. So these adhesions get busted up. You get skin vesicles or bullier. The third type is vasculitis. And we've seen that where, you know, the blood vessels are coming down through the skin. Well, you get inflammation of the that those blood vessels, and then you get bleeding, purpura pura, ichymosis, petechiae. You get all these types of bleeding uh, because these blood vessels are inflamed. And it's the neutrophil granule pro proteins is the target antigen, presumably released from the activated neutrophils. You get neutrophil degranulation and inflammation, so the type 2, and p you, the patient presents with a vasculitis or this type of presentation. Good pasture syndrome is also a type 2 hypersensitivity disease. It affects the kidneys and the lungs. So you can get bleeding out of the lung and out of the kidney. You get kidney shutdown. And this is the complement and FC receptor mediated inflammation. So also the type 2. You get nephritis or inflammation of the kidney and you get bleeding from the lung. A acute rheumatic fever, you have this streptococcal cell wall antigen. The antibody cross-reacts with the myocardial antigen. So at first, this antigen of your immune system, this antibodies are attacking this streptococcal. There's, a cell, there's some kind of antigen inside the cell wall, and your antibodies are doing a good job at identifying this infection. However, by ways we don't fully understand, there is a cross-reaction of this antibody with a myocardial antigen. So this antibody somehow cross-reacts or gets confused with and then starts attacking this, your, your heart. And some of the proteins that are out of your myo myocardial tissue and then now you start getting problems with your heart. You have inflammation, you have microphage activation, phagocytosis of the cells, you get inflammation of your myocardial uh, sac and your myo you get myocarditis and you have arthritis. Myasthenia gravis is the acetylcholine receptor. We already kind of talked about that that in the last video. You get muscle weaknesses, muscle weakness and paralysis. Uh, 
Graves' disease, uh, the, the antibody attaches or attacks this TSA, TSH receptor, which the thyroid uh, cells, the thyroid gland, thinks that it is needs to increase its production of thyroid hormones. You get hyperthyroidism. The uh, last two is you get insulin, uh, insulin resistant diabetes. So you have an insulin receptor. So you have a cell here and you have this receptor, this insulin receptor, which helps the cell take up glucose, um, glucose to undergo, you know, the, the pathways that glucose goes ultimately leading to the oxidation phosphorylation cycle and you have a problem with this insulin receptor this insulin receptor gets attacked by these antibody and this antibody inhibits binding of insulin so this insulin is trying to bond to this receptor so glucose can be uptaked into the cell however this antibody is there sitting there and it won't get off the receptor and so this insulin can't do its job. You get hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis. So too much uh, glucose in the blood and you get ketoacidosis. Pernicious anemia is the last one. It's intrinsic factor. The, the target antigen is the, is the intrinsic factor of the gastric parietal cells. So when you eat, your food comes down the esophagus and into the stomach and inside the stomach you have these parietal cells parietal cells and these parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor or IF so IF is being secreted out of these parietal cells what IF does is it binds to vitamin B12 in our diet and vitamin B and then it binds to intrinsic factor binds to the vitamin B, vitamin B12 and then as it goes down into the duodenum uh, jejunum and ileum the small intestine it gets absorbed up into the bloodstream this intrinsic factor this intrinsic factor slash B12 complex. It gets absorbed back up into your body. A side note too is that when people undergo gastric bypass and they get half of their stomach chopped off or whatever, um, you know, they can have problems with this intrinsic factor production and the B12 um, can be decreased inside these patients that get this gastric bypass. So you have to watch their B12. And B12 helps with erythropoiesis. So if you don't have enough B12, then your blood cell production is going to be abnormal and you might get anemia. Another part that's not mentioned here is B12 is, helps a lot with the nerves. So it helps with the brain and the, uh, the, the nervous system. So you could start seeing some neurological signs and symptoms because this, B, this patient can't have this B12, which is called cobalamin. And if that is not being absorbed into the system, you can have problems there too. So that's pernicious anemia. And all of these are type 2 hypersensitivity diseases or antibody-mediated diseases. We'll see you in the next video.